Do you ever buy something just because you thought it'd be cool? Not necessarily because you really needed it. I got one of these cases from my favorite Harbor Freight. And uh, it looks like those Pelican cases, I think. Obviously, it's a knockoff. But uh, decided that the paint gun was, was a good enough investment and purchase to go ahead and put it in a, in a foamy case. So you can see there's like little blocks cut out here. You can kind of mold your own case, so to speak. So that's what I did. And um, I got everything in there for the paint gun, all the tips. The gun itself, pretty good protective cover. And there's a, a bottom pad. Um, two of these here, two layers thick of those. And then there's a pad like this, but on the bottom with a flat. Seems to work pretty well, keeps everything protected. So that's, you know, that was my, my goal there. So I just thought I'd share. Good afternoon, everybody. It's about quarter of six. Now I'm going to go ahead and start working on the inside of the car just to clean it up. So I talked to the Southern Polyurethane guys that I bought the paint from. There's no need to take it down to bare metal for the purposes of the epoxy. And since the interior of the car is obviously not going to be all that exciting and most of it will be covered with the carpet, I don't intend to take this down to bare metal. Plus, it'll take me absolutely forever to do this. So, uh, I'm going to go through mainly with the grinder and the wire wheel and wire, wire brushes, things like that, and get the, you know, some of the areas like this over here is just dirt and nastiness and just generally scuff it up. I also got a case of Scotch Bright red pads from Amazon. Again, uh, open box, though it's completely sealed, so it must have been a return. This is the only damage that I could find. So I saved, I don't know, about four bucks on the box. So it was about 17 bucks. There's 20 pads in there. I'm sure I'll go through all those pretty, pretty easily. But anyway, so that's the plan for the evening is just to continue on getting plug welds redone that I need to and, and some larger holes filled with weld metal as I need to and get everything generally cleaned up. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Monday, 14th of May, about four o'clock. Back over the garage. Going to continue cleaning up the inside. And uh, trying to get up underneath the dash here specifically tonight and get some of the uh, some of that old seam sealer out of there try to melt that out same thing around the wheel wells here um, take some of the scotch bright red that I have and just kind of go to town gonna probably make an absolute mess uh, including both of the shop and of my person so that's the goal for tonight and in addition to the case that I showed you I also got a um, new four and a half inch angle grinder from Harbor Freight and their uh, six inch DA sander. So we'll see how the DA sander goes. But uh, the angle grinder here, the other one, I had two originally. If you remember, the other one finally stopped working on me completely. Pretty frustrating when the thing just stops working. And because I'm a little bit lazy, it's easier for me to, to have two different styles of heads on these things instead of swapping them out. So this thing was like 30 bucks. A little bit better quality than the uh, other one I had. The only thing I don't like about it is it's not a paddle uh, trigger. I've gotten really used to that and come to like it, but we'll see how it goes. All right, well, this is fun. Um, so this is why I've decided to take some of this uh, seam sealer off. If you can see here that pitting that I've got. Now, it doesn't appear that any of that goes down and comes through at all, which is great. But, uh, but that's why I've decided to do that. So the same symptoms that I had over up on the driver's side there that actually went all the way through, um, I saw a little bit of it uh, obviously on the passenger side, but again, I don't think that goes through, so I'm not going to, um, not gonna, I'll prep that surface and, and clean it up, but that's about it. So now I'm just, you can see all sorts of schmata and gunk and stuff. Schmata, that's a Navy term, by the way. Uh, gunk and stuff and everything going on up there. Um, so I'm just going around with either the scotch brake or tools of the trade here, wire wheel. I've got a heat gun to loosen up some of the seam sealer, a hand wire brush, um, various picks and scrapers and sandpapers and stuff and bringing everything to bear on this puppy to, to get her cleaned up. And uh, it's a mess. 
it's hot from this halogen light, but uh, but it's but it's coming along. So dirty work, but somebody's got to do it. All right, it's about eight o'clock, calling in the night. Uh, it's amazing how much time this stuff takes. Though I, I guess I knew in a way. I just you know didn't know, but uh, took a lot of uh, of the red Scotch Brite in here. Got a lot of this stuff scuffed up on the inside. And then also in the passenger compartment itself, got most of that side all done. Still got some work on the driver's side, obviously. And going around and still scuffing stuff up. Under the dash, there's a real pain in the rear because everything is hard to get at, as you would expect. But uh, slowly coming around to getting that. Scuffed up some of the top of the, of the uh, where the dash pad would go here. And getting under there a little bit. So, uh, yeah, long and tedious, but, um, but moving along. All right, welcome back to the garage, everybody. It's uh, about 4 o'clock on the 22nd of May. It's been a little while since I've been here, at least a week. Um, I had mentioned in my last little update that I was looking for some moisture separation solutions for the compressor, and I think what I've set it on is this motor guard little kind of system here. So this here is an inline filter, submicronic compressed filter. It's a half-inch pipe that comes into there. It's good for about 100 cubic feet. Per minute at uh, 80 pounds so well in excess of anything that I'm going to try to put through the compressor or the air hose and hopefully that'll take out any uh, residual moisture that I have and that I'm concerned with and it's a pretty uh, pretty cool design you can see how somebody said hey well you know a roll of toilet paper will work for this that's really all this thing kind of is it's pretty stout pretty heavy you know, it's about 60 bucks or so so a little pricey I think but but you have this uh, filter element in here, and it really is just seems like a roll of toilet paper. And I've read a lot of guys saying just go out and buy cheapo toilet paper to replace these filters because it's more of a moisture thing. So in each of the individual little rolls, the, uh, the moisture gets sucked up. And also, this is going to be an at-the-gun solution, desiccant air dryers. They got pretty good reviews. You can see even the picture on the back there, if that'll focus, uh, shows that. So that's going to hopefully be taking care of me. So that the sets of these here, you're looking at about seventy bucks, seventy-five dollars. The desiccant air dryers are actually not that uh, too expensive, and there is a way that you can re replace the desiccant in there, I guess. So it's a little tricky, uh, somewhat easy to break the the. Uh, they're not necessarily designed to be replaced in the desiccant, but I'll we'll see if I even get that far. So anyway, that's going to be the first order of business tonight is to get this. Um, Motor guard on the compressor, I believe, hopefully, anyway, this is already half-inch piping, so it should be relatively easy to do here, and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, so there it is. Um, easy installation. I didn't, uh, I needed to go buy another six-inch piece of pipe there, black pipe, but uh, no leaks, but that thing's pointing straight up, so that's going to, I'd rather have that obviously straight down, but uh, the only other question I had, had is what comes first, the regulator or the motor guard? And looking at the instructions, it said if you're in wet environments, you know, very moist air, you want to have some sort of uh, catch prop, uh, if possible, beforehand. So I decided to do that. It also calls for about 20 feet of pipe prior to the motor guard so that it can adequately cool. And obviously, I'm not going to be able to get that either. So um, we'll try this and we'll, we'll see how it works. All right, so I got these trim pieces here. Sorry that I'm kind of close on top of it. You can't quite see the whole thing in one shot. That essentially covers, and the car's up on the wings, um, but it essentially covers the seam here between the rear valance and the bottom of the wing. Well, you see that angle there is at a, about a 45 or so, but going upwards. But if you look here at the actual mating unit, or mating junction, it's 45 going downwards. So I don't think these are cut right. And they came from rimmers. Um, but anyway, so it's, uh, I was going to put these in because I want to put them in before I paint, seam seal it and everything like that because I've got, you know, these gaps in here and stuff like that to worry about. But I'm afraid to, uh, to do it now since I don't think they're cut right, but I want to ask on my favorite form before I do that. So. Uh, skipping this part, moving on to something else. All right, still still uh, working on removing seam sealer. I decided to just remove all of it. Um, 
probably don't really have to, but I need to rough everything up in here uh, anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove at least the majority of it. Um, so I got it pretty much scraped off with heat. I'm going to try to do some uh, lacquer thinner now and break that up a little bit. Use some chemical stuff to break it up since it's a little painful now. Um, other thing I'll show you here is you can see there it's a kind of a bright red there and as you get up underneath obviously the redness goes away and it's back to that um, red primer. So they, uh, they didn't turn upside down I guess when they shot the body not that I would necessarily expected them to but just an interesting point there as you get underneath this stuff um, you don't you don't have body paint anymore it's just everything is all still primed so uh, still a lot of work to do but keeping going all right everybody it's about eight o'clock I'm gonna call it a night um, I didn't use the compressor too much but I did take the filter out of the motor guard here and it's completely bone dry but also when I blew down the little inline filter here that was also dry so um, kind of not a conclusive first test but hopefully uh, it will work out looks neat uh, as far as the evening went I got about half of the seam sealer underneath the dash all removed painfully um, except in front of the battery box if you can see that kind of picks back up again because it's painful to get at with the way the car is uh, in, a, in a very broad hindsight I kind of wish that I did not put in the battery box before I got the seam sealer in and got this painted underneath just uh, just to get that little spot I'm not gonna be too concerned with it. I'll just leave it but um, I did get all this in here up to about the halfway mark where I stopped at the heat and it starts getting too well I'm not really showing you anything it starts getting too heavy and uh, get up here and you can see that the shiny seam sealer under there get some heat in there and get that cleaned up um, <clears throat> otherwise the uh, the bottom, I revisited some of that with some lacquer thinner and uh, the red scotch Bright pads, which worked really well. It's what I used a lot underneath the dash there. And I got some uh, final spots under here, but for all intents and purposes, as far as I'm concerned, outside of final prep, the bottom's ready to paint. Um, so yeah, that was about it. I'm going to try to make a video out of the stuff that I have so far. It's not going to be all that exciting, but uh, I wanted to mention, because I don't think there's going to be another one for a little while. I wanted to mention that on the 3rd of June, first Sunday in June every year, the Connecticut MG Club hosts a car show at Water, or excuse me, at Harkness Memorial State Park in Waterford, Connecticut. Uh, I think it runs from about 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon or so. Last year there was probably about 400 cars there. It's a pretty good show. Not a whole lot of Spitfires, a couple, about half a dozen or so, but uh, a lot of nice other cars, and it's a, a very nice park. A good venue so hopefully the weather will be nice but I'll be there if you happen to recognize me please feel free to say hi I'd love to meet some of you that are in the area and uh, watching the videos otherwise thanks everybody for liking and subscribing I know it's been kind of slowly but like I had mentioned in one of my quick little post that this stuff is rather boring and I'm not going to bore you with a lot of the details but uh, I did want to get this video out and uh, on a personal note I had my calculus final on Friday which I passed so now with the exception of some administrative paperwork I uh, I have my college degree so pretty excited about that pretty stoked that's about it for me for tonight I will get over here this weekend to continue some more prepping and removing seam sealer and all but otherwise have a good rest of your week enjoy your Memorial Day weekend please take some time out to remember the service members that died in uh, in the defense of this country I know I do being a service member myself so uh or a retired service member so please uh in your in your holiday uh festivities if you happen to have some with family and friends please uh take a moment you know to just to just give a thought to those that uh paid the, the ultimate price so otherwise have a good rest of your week enjoy your weekend hopefully i can say hi to some of you at the car show on the third of june and we'll see you later cheers